All right, good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, January 27th, 2021, and we got some news to cover. I'd like to thank everybody who um, gave me their, their best wishes and support for being off yesterday. I promise that I don't take days off unless uh, I absolutely need to, so I'd like to thank you guys again. Uh, I do pride myself in trying to be consistent, especially with the morning news episodes for those who actually uh, rely on this show for their, their morning news. Again, thank you so much for being patient and understanding, and um, we will catch up on everything right now, so let's get into it now. Senator Patrick Leahy, uh, the senator who was chosen to reside over Trump's impeachment trial, because now that this is a uh, Trump is a former president, it is in the Constitution that uh, federal judges cannot rule over the impeachment trials once the president is a former uh, president. And but unfortunately, Mr. Leahy or Senator Leahy has, excuse me, been hospitalized. Um, they're not saying with what I maybe the news broke recently as of the time I'm uh, re reporting this um, or recording this episode as to what he has specifically not sure if it's COVID or other complications or maybe a bit of everything or maybe not maybe just something entirely separate. So it's hard to say uh, wish him well again the health of either a Democrat Republican doesn't matter. I wish everyone the best health wise because again, if you don't have your health. You don't have any of this. You can't enjoy. And what I mean by that is you can't enjoy life. I know that might sound a little bit cheesy, but it's true. So anyways, the next thing is that Biden ordered 200 million more doses of the vaccine. And he's now saying instead of getting 100 million vac people vaccinated in the first 100 days, he's very optimistic that there will be 150 million people. That's his goal, as realistic or unrealistic as it may sound, depending on who you ask. At the end of the day, I mean, look, again, this is. This is met with a lot of speculation, a lot of skepticism as to whether or not, you know, this massive inoculation should even occur, especially for those that don't want to take the vaccine. I don't want to get into all that because I've covered that in uh, the episode from the other day. But again, it, it's very hard to say. So we will, uh, again, as always, see what happens and um, if he follows through on his promise or not. But I think the main issue is not necessarily going to be ordering the amounts of these uh, these vials and all that to get into the states. I think it comes down to whether or not the people actually want to take it. So you can have the best logistics, the best military planning, to the best distribution plan, and have all the extra vials and all that. But if the people don't want to take it, then it's a bit of a different story. I mean, personally, I don't think I'll be taking it. Uh, that's just me. Um, again, things could change, but as of right now, I won't be taking it. So we'll see. It. We'll see what happens. The next thing is that Leon Black is stepping down as Apollo's CEO of one of the world's biggest private equity firms after a, an, a, an independent investigation discovered that he paid Jeffrey Epstein $158 million. Now, allegedly, he claims that he paid Epstein $158 million as sort of a thank you or as a fee for Epstein's uh, apparently very astute tax advice and apparently Epstein saved the company out of paying roughly two billion dollars in taxes so the 158 million dollars that he gave Epstein was sort of like a thank you now there's a little bit more to that than meets the eye apparently he gave Epstein like a, a 30 million dollar loan and only 10 million of it was paid back there was a dispute and they hadn't spoken since uh, 2018 it seems as though as Epstein got older he had a lot of falling out with people that um he was on very good terms with. I mean, we look at it, well, at least publicly, Les Wexner, again, many other people that he hadn't spoken to for years. It could be also that because he was radioactive, as he self-proclaimed after being uh, indicted and charged and serving jail, well, I say jail time with air quotes. He served, he lived in a honeymoon jail uh, for about a year in 2010. You know, the Prince Charles and all that, sorry, not Prince Charles, Prince Andrew wanted to distance himself from them. So it makes sense. I mean, everything adds up in, in, in the in the sense that when you look at all of it, the fact that he was, again, he killed himself or committed suicide, as they say, kind of adds up to all the timely fashion of things too, right? So again, we'll, we'll see what happens there, but I don't think there's anything to really speculate on other than what he paid Epstein for. However, the more conspiratorial side of this is that he might have, Epstein might have had something on uh, this gentleman, Leon Black. So maybe he did give advice and he said, listen, you know, maybe he did give Leon Black tax advice, but he said, look, you know, I got this on you. Instead of paying me, you know, 10, 20 million or whatever for the tax advice, I want way more than that. You know what I mean? So it's hard to say because, again, Epstein had the, uh, the quote unquote secrets on everybody. 
so it's hard to say whenever he leveraged that or whenever he didn't. Or maybe if he just took those secrets and sold them to the Mossad or the CIA or MI6, as he's rumored to have been doing, maybe once you sell those secrets, you can't use them again. It, I don't know. It, we're just speculating, right? So anyways, now connecting to that, Ghislaine Maxwell tried to get her charges dropped, claiming that her jury was literally, she claimed this, her jury was too white. And it didn't work. It, obviously, it didn't work, even though Maxwell argued that this particular indictment was obtained illegally. So she's saying that this particular indictment in charge was obtained illegally and the jury that prosecuted her or that made the final decision in her case that said she was guilty had said she said the jury was too white. What the hell does that mean? Like, I don't care if it's if someone said too white, too black, too this, too that. What do you mean too white? You're a sex offender. You sex traffic people like just short of getting you on tape. Everyone else can testify to this. Hundreds and hundreds of women. What the hell are you talking about? Like, are you still trying to fight tooth and nail? Apparently, she's still being moved from cell to cell every night because of, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's whole thing. Again, these are multiple layers of government. If they want her dead, they will have her killed. They will. The, and the intelligence agency will not tell other parts of the government. Don't kid yourself. It's not like the government's all in on this big, massive conspiracy. It, it's more of an independent sort of thing that is using the resources of the government if they decide to take a route. But anyways, I'm not, I'm not trying to encourage that. I'm just saying, what does she think she's going to get out of arguing this? But I guess she's just fighting so desperately at this point that it doesn't matter. So anyways, the next thing is that conservative MP in Britain, a conservative MP, a uh, member of parliament is what it stands for, called for GPS tracking of all Brits to ensure covid compliance okay let's let's play both sides of this all right so let's think let's play the side of there's nothing wrong with doing this the whole argument on that side is well you know to those who say they're going to track us if they really wanted to they could already track us especially in england allegedly one of the most surveilled cities um towns countries in the or region sorry countries in the world right I agree with that. However, they never stop looking. The other side of this is that they'll never stop looking for ways to track us. It's so true. You think they're going to stop just because, you know, they can track our cell phone? They're going to use every single method they can because the more data means more money, means more they can sell that data to private companies for massive amounts of money, or private companies can sell data to the government, vice versa. They exchange data all the time. I would dare to say that the reasoning behind this, I'd lean more to just because they could track us on our phones, on our laptops, our smart TVs, our tablets, our watches, doesn't mean our cars, doesn't mean that they're going to stop finding other ways to track us. And, and to be honest, I'm not trying to push a conspiracy at all. I want to make that very clear. But when you look at it, exploiting this virus and using the vaccine as some type of tracker or a vaccine card as a tracker is a great way to track people. We, regardless of what political perspective you take, you cannot deny that, right? Now, the next thing is that Elliot Page, and we're going to get into a little bit more of just a little gossip very quickly. Elliot Page is divorcing uh, his wife, Emma Portner, two months after he or she announced that she's trans. Now, Elliot Page has been an actress for many, many years in films like Inception. Uh, very recently, I believe, is it Stranger? No, the Umbrella Academy. Sorry. She's in the Umbrella Academy. She announced two months ago that she is transitioning to become a man. Before she announced that, she was lesbian. And so her married to a, a woman, right? Now, everyone's kind of shocked, though, they're getting a divorce. Well, if you were the one, if you're a woman, and you find out that your lesbian partner, who's also a woman, is now transitioning to become a man, what are you going to think of that, right? And so th this is the personal choice. I'm not here to make any comment on it, right? I mean, there is a big debate as to, you know, how we should refer to, to trans people, he or she or, you know, things like this. There's a big debate. I'm, that, I'm not trying to get into that debate. We can, I'm always happy to have that debate. I think there's two great perspectives to take on that. But at the same time, again, just wanted to cover it. And I have, uh, I, I've got, it doesn't bother me personally, trans, gay, lesbian. I got no problem with any of that. So anyways. The next thing is that authorities are now patrolling Costco's and Walmart's to enforce masking and social distancing. Look, this is in the United States specifically, but I hear it's going on all around the world too. A lot of people are saying that as well. So, uh, look, here's the thing. It's one thing to keep the corporations open and then the small businesses open as well so people could choose where they want to go. But it's another thing to shut down the small businesses and then give tax exemptions and to the corporations and give them COVID relief money and let them stay open. And the small businesses can't. And you might say, what does that have to do with cops patrolling? Well, let's put it this way. 
if people are complaining, which they are, that the tax money of the of this of the government is going towards extra, excuse me, police surveillance of these WalMarts and Costco's because of how large they are, you know what would have been even better if they didn't have to surveil them because if they just kept the small businesses open then people would be going to the small businesses and there would be no need for surveillance because by definition, small businesses are generally not that large in physical size if they even have a store at all. And so you'd be saving the government money and on top of that, the small businesses will be supported. Those mom and pop shops that have been around for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. You know what I mean? Those mom and pop shops that are now going broke, having to shut down so sadly because of this, if you're going to keep the corporations open, man, keep the small businesses open. I'm not even trying to take a political side here. Let's just be realistic. The next thing is that as California reopens a judge, uh, as California reopens, sorry, as Governor Newsom lifted the lockdown, which, by the way, I reported to two days ago, uh, he's lifting most of the, of the lockdowns in California because a petition with almost 1 million signatures was signed uh, calling for the removal of Gavin Newsom. So, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom. So you can see why he's doing this, right? He's trying to play both sides against the middle here, as do most politicians anyways. So they're lifting the lockdown rules, but for some reason, places of worship are not allowed. Like really, even if they social distance and they hold mass outside, still not allowed? Now, one side of the argument is, well, Dave, you know, that's how bad COVID is. But the other side of the argument is, well, when he feels the pressure from almost a million people to remove him, he's got no problem listening to them. But obviously the church or, you know, the places of worship don't have any pull over him right now. So that's why he's keeping those places closed. The way I see it, guys, is very simple. No, no left politics, no right politics. If it's bad, if COVID is bad, all right, in a certain town, region, city, whatever. But the people want to open up. The majority of the people want to open up. What are you going to say? Let them open up. And for those that don't want to open up. There's got to be something put in place where they can work from home or something like this. Very simple. The people that want to open up, go. If you know that you, you're going to risk catching it, and I'm not trying to say that sarcastically. I'm serious. Like, if you think that it's not real or, you know, you're not going to catch it or you can fight it very easily if you catch it, seriously, no joke. That's, that's your perspective, and I respect that because that is your right. Not just as an American, but honestly, as a, as a human being in any, any developed country. That is your right. So, again... I got no problem with it, but for the people that are, you know, that are very fearful of catching it, something's got to be put in place. Even if it costs the taxpayers money, you, if you want to play both sides against the middle, that's how I would do it. I'm not a politician. Maybe it's easier said than done, but again, the next thing is that 45 Republican senators voted against impeachment and said this is a sham trial, but the Republicans that did vote in favor of impeaching Trump were... Uh, uh, Republican Sa ben I think Ben Sass is his name uh, Mitt Romney, Susan Collins don't remember his first name but Senator Mikowski and Senator Pat Toomey voted to impeach now I think personally I mean Toomey's been kind of flip flopping on as to whether or not Trump should be impeached he kind of decided to you know side with the Democrats at the very end and I don't want to make this a partisan thing I don't want to make it seem like one side is you know taking perspectives or sides over the other I'm really not trying to do that okay guys but ultimately I think at least with Mitt Romney, the reason why he's doing this is because Romney wants to probably run as a conservative um, moderate, is the word, or a conservative centrist in 2024. So he can kind of say, look, I am a Republican, but, you know, I had nothing to do with the Trump stuff. I had nothing to do with the mega stuff, so vote for me. That'll probably be his thing in 2024. If I had to predict, I could be very wrong. Who knows, right? The next thing is that Biden's campaign has been pumped with a record number of dark money funding. And I'm very happy, by the way, that the Washington Post, New York Times, I'm happy they're reporting this because it is showing fairness, at least to some extent. That doesn't give them a, a clear cut, you know, that doesn't give them a pass on all the other stuff they covered up, like the Hunter Biden story and all that. But again, let's just, you know, give credit where it's due right now. So they covered this and they said that anonymous donors have donated, I think it was like something like... 140 something million dollars give or take 150 million dollars something like that of dark money and that is the ultimate record between any politician of any politician republican or democrat the one who used to hold that record was mitt romney with 113 million dollars back in 2012 donated with dark money now what is dark money dark money is essentially money that is given on behalf of excuse me on behalf of non-profit organizations now 
the, it's ridiculous because nonprofit organizations aren't legally obligated to disclose who is donating the money and which nonprofit is sending that money. And look, there's good things to that and bad things, but the bad things definitely outweigh the good in the sense that this is all connected to the lobbying aspect of it and all of the, the different politicians that come together and say, listen, you know, we're going to get our donors to funnel this money through and they're going to open up a private uh, nonprofit so that, you know, we don't need to tell them where it's coming from. Now, yes, I believe there is a limit, but again, give or take 140, 150 million dollars on dark money, man, that's a lot of money. Right now, don't get me wrong. That's only like 10% of what Biden had raised overall. But still, that's a damn lot of money that no one knows where it came from and nobody ever will. And even if it's found out, it'll get shut down in a court case because, again, it was obtained illegally. So it's um, excuse me. It's, it's very, very hard to say. Very, very hard to say what's going to happen there. But again, it's being covered. And look, I don't think anything's really going to happen to tell you the truth. So we'll see. The next thing is that Israel seems to be fighting Biden, saying that they're going to go forward with attacking Iran as if it was still, you know, the Trump administration that was in there because, you know, they had uh, previous obligations with Trump and all that. And we all know that Trump was a massive supporter of Israel. And Iran responded uh, to the statement by pretty much saying that uh, this is psychological war or psychological warfare that Israel's trying to play. They're, they're, Iran said they're not worried. I believe the Iranian general, military general, one of the top ones, or the top one, said they're not concerned. Look, it, th they always do this. The, it, particularly Israel against others, always, you know, threats are being made back and forth all the time, and then, you know, nothing happens, and sometimes something does. In the case of the Iranian nuclear scientist, that they claim was, they have evidence of Israel doing it, I wouldn't rule out Israel, but again, they haven't shown the evidence, so it's hard to say. But again, I'm sure Israel wasn't sad over the fact that their top nuclear scientist was killed, too, assuming it wasn't Israel that did it, right? So again, we got to look at all the angles here and see what's happening. Again, we're going to have the same thing, the, the same issues that Obama had with Netanyahu, probably going to be the same thing that Biden's going to have. Again, we're seeing a slight continuation of the Obama uh, era kind of rules and stuff, even though Biden is trying to signify a difference. It's still a little bit, you know, uh, stark in, in uh, comparison. The next thing is that U.S. and Russia have extended their nuclear arms deal, or pact as they call it, after Biden and Putin spoke on the phone. It always makes me laugh, this whole thing with the Russian collusion thing. You don't think that the first thing Biden would say on the phone is, is you know, like, you guys are going to pay a price for this? Now, look, I'm not assuming that Russia did hack and all that. I'm just saying that because it's really ironic how, and I know there's a certain quote-unquote game to be played in politics. You know, you talk about certain things on one phone call, you cover another topic on the next because you don't want, you know, one topic to encompass and muddy up the waters for other major issues. I get that. I'm not naive. But at the same time, I mean, Christ, if, if, that's a big if, Russia did everything and it's true what these, these American agencies are claiming that Russia did all this stuff, man... I'm surprised Biden didn't say what the hell's wrong with you. Like, you know what I mean, right? So anyways, I'm not trying to take a side here with Russia or with America. I'm just saying right down the middle. You got two guys head to head, whether it's on a street corner or whether it's in politics or business. It's the same idea. Why? Because we're all humans. We all interact the same like that. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens there. And uh, I, yeah, we'll... we'll um, I don't think Biden's going to take a very tough stance on it. It'll probably be more through sanctions and things like this. I don't think that uh, that Biden's going to be like a tough talking guy right in front of Putin. I mean, it's just what I, I don't see happening, but I could be very wrong. So the next thing or the final thing is that th which kind of ending off in a good note. Three men are paying fifty five million dollars each for a SpaceX flight that will be the first private flight to the International Space Station. Uh, where it's just three guys, pretty much. I mean, they're rich guys, but um, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And again, commercial space flight is interesting because I want to see over time if, you know, everyone who goes into space has to go through some kind of training or if it'll get to the point where the technology will become so advanced, which I'm sure it will eventually. I hope it happens sooner than later, but the technology gets so advanced that you can kind of just hop into a ship and then just head on up like you do in an elevator right? So it'll be cool to see. And if you got the money to do that, I mean, hey, if $55 million is chump change for you, then I guess you can head to the International Space Station if you got that kind of money. I certainly don't. So uh, <laughs> that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you for the support that I received yesterday as well and uh, for being off and all that. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers.